real job site, how we take out a tiled shower. So let's go, let's get started. We're coming out in big chunks instead of little tiny pieces. There we go. There's the big chunks that we wanted. And here's the curb. Now you can see our problem. We got wet wood. These two by fours are wet. You see all the water? Okay, so here is the tiled shower that we're gonna be demoing. This is a four by four ceramic, very popular in the 80s and 90s. Uh, this is on a mortar bed float. It's pretty much the same if you're also gonna be tearing it off a Duroc or a drywall. Uh, the tools that we're gonna be using, hammer and bar, you're gonna need these. Uh, the buzz tool, we call this a buzz tool. It's a oscillating tool or a multi-tool. And we're gonna use this to cut the drywall away from the tile to separate it so that when we take out the tile, it doesn't unnecessarily damage the adjacent walls. Very important, one of the biggest mistakes I see DIYers make is they just go gung-ho tearing it out and all of a sudden they tear out their drywall. Now you gotta hire a drywaller to come in and tape a texture, uh, so that's important. We have our, our demo hammer. So this is a Harbor Freight Special, this is a Hercules. I had a Milwaukee that I spent about $600 on, comparable to this unit. Spent $600 on it, only lasts about a year and a half and it died. Have a big pry bar. Big pry bar will help getting, you know, maybe the, the curb off of here, uh, getting the mortar bed pan out. So uh, one of the reasons why we're doing this demo uh, is because this old shower had some water damage to it. Uh, one of the problems that we have with the traditional style systems, the water in, water out, whether that's a pan liner, a hot mop, uh, what happens a lot of the time, everything gets soaked in here, the mortar wicks up and over the curb, and I have a lot of videos on this, and I, I see it on almost every one of these showers I take out. It comes up over the curb, gets the wood wet, two by fours start to rot out on the outside around the curb, here and here. And then what it also does is it'll crack the tile on the curb or the grout because the two by fours that are making up the curb, they get wet and they swell. You know, the tile can't give and it cracks. So when we rebuild this, what we do, we're going in with a sealed system, a system that has the waterproofing directly under the tile so we don't get that wicking action. And also with the curbs, I do not prefer wood curbs. I like to use either masonry or foam uh, so that that um, curb, even if it had a little bit of water on it, it's not going to expand and ruin the whole installation because once this part goes, once the curb goes, uh, at a minimum, you're doing a one row repair. Uh, so also, you tend to get with these uh, water in, water out systems, you tend to get mold at the floor wall connection. So got that going, uh, but we do really good with the dust control to keeping the dust down because you have, you know, mold particles and different things that we don't want going out into the house. Even if you plastic off really good, every time you walk out the door, right, the, the dust goes out. So I like to set up some negative airflow. Um, we're using our air scrubber here. Uh, we set up our intake hose with cardboard around it to seal it off. Uh, the, the negative air pressure is going to pull everything this way. It's not going to want to go this way. Uh, this, this works really well. If you don't have an air scrubber, uh, you can uh, set up a fan. Just get a box fan. We'll do the same thing. A uh, little harder to rig up. Um, the hose is really handy to, to just kind of poke through there. But you can set up a fan and do the same thing. Draw everything out of the window. Okay, so the shower doors usually just lift up and out. Um, these sliders, usually they just kind of come up and out of the... Oh, this little track is loose. Yeah, you can usually just um, unhook the rollers just like you would like a closet door. Get this guy out. So these, these headers that are on these slider doors, these are, uh, uh, sometimes they'll put a little screw on the inside just to hold it in. That's probably what should have been done because this came right off, it was just loose. And then we got three screws, is typical. So I'm just gonna use my impact. Get the... And then these are, these are always siliconed in too, so you usually have to cut, cut the bead. Once you get it started, they'll usually just peel off. 
So that's how the, the side, side rails come off. Uh, we'll do the same thing on this side. So shower doors out, easy peasy. Uh, the next thing we do is uh, the fixture. We're replacing this guy, so I'm gonna start just unscrew the shower head. You know, make sure you ask your homeowners, like with parts like this, with fixtures, I always ask them, do you want us to save anything? Sometimes they wanna put it in their other bathroom or something. Uh, in this case, this is just garbage. Uh, once you get the shower head off, you know, a pair of channel lock pliers, we we'll usually get the uh, arm and flange off of here. Counterclockwise, we'll take it right off. That uh, this flange should should just pop right out. I did it. Yeah, there's the flange. You usually just take your razor knife and, and pop the cover off the front. Once you do that, this screw is gonna be exposed. This is just a Phillips. Sometimes there's an Allen wrench. This is just a Phillips to make it real easy. So, I um, also, 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 make sure you know where the water shut off is. Shut the water off before you start messing with any of this. But we're doing it right now with, with the water live. We do this all the time. So these are pressurized. If I was to turn this knob, water would squirt out of this hole, but it's off. So I'm gonna hold it because if I don't hold this and it spins, it's gonna, it's gonna blast me with water. So I'm just gonna take this here out. That's all I need to do to get that part out. And now, now that I have that, uh, this is a Moen. This is a this is an old Moen Positemp valve. I use these a lot. This just has two screws. Uh, once we get the, uh, knob off, I can just take the escutcheon screws, get these guys out of here. Now everything's free from the rough end valve. I'll probably need my razor knife if they cocked it again. But since I'm not saving this, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna bang it off. There we go. So so now I can go ahead and demo, but it's good. Now, now we're ready, we can go ahead and demo uh, without anything else in the way. If we're not replacing the trap, you wanna protect you know, any debris. We're gonna have a lot of you know, dust and tile chips, and cement and everything. We don't want that going down the drain and clogging up the sewer. So I'm gonna take these uh, two screws out. So yeah, there's the drain cover, just two screws. And I like to take a rag and just put it down in there. So even in, even after we take off the, the whole drain body, you know, we're protecting uh, the sewer pipe from getting any debris down into it. So uh, that's nice to do. We're ready to, to start with the bus. If you don't have one of these buzz tools, I suggest you get one. But if you don't, you can always use your razor knife to do the same thing. It's just gonna take uh, more force and uh, it's gonna be, uh, take a little bit longer to do. But you could do the same thing. You just gotta make a bunch of passes where with the buzz tool, it just goes really fast. I think I'm gonna go across the top now. And the way I do it with my buzz tool, you can see I'm putting it at an angle. And I'm really, I'm really only concerned with going the half inch through the drywall. And you don't even need to go the full half inch because if you get most of the drywall, say it's half inch drywall, and you're only cutting you know, three eighths into it, it's still gonna break off clean, right? It's still gonna break off clean. Um, 
but if you if you try to if you try to stick it straight in, it doesn't have the nice cutting angle. And then also if you hit a stud, you know, it'll just kind of ride on the stud. You can I could tell I was hitting uh, drywall nails and they just kind of bounce right over it, you know. So uh, go in at an angle and, and you'll do just fine. You don't need to try to get it perfect. Just try to get through that half inch of drywall and um, you don't want to waste time. If you hit a stud, you don't want to be, you know, trying to cut through a stud. You'll feel it and just kind of go around it. want to be careful because sometimes you know there's electrical or plumbing it shouldn't be real close to the drywall but you want to be careful I've cut through water lines with sawzalls and stuff so just be mindful that you want to stay you know about a half inch depth when you're using these guys so I'll get I'll get these two sides done then we'll, we'll be ready to use the chipping hammer all right so yeah now we're ready to start using the chipping hammer uh, where I like to start I got my hearing protection in eyeglasses on uh, I'm going to just, just bust a line going straight down in both of the corners. That's where we like to start. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and go for it. Respirator. Yeah, it's pretty dusty. Alright, what Ronnie's doing right here, he's marking the studs because we're going to end up prying off of the studs. Uh, more on that later. good all right so now that we got the two corners done I'm gonna go ahead and make some lines uh, yeah we Ronnie just marked a pencil line for me because uh, you want to work in manageable sections right you don't want to try to take the whole wall off uh, for one it could be really dangerous if it falls down and I have a video where I'm doing a tub and that happened the whole wall came off. I'll put the link to that video in the description so you can check it out. But yeah, working in manageable sections so it doesn't fall and then you can also carry it once you get it off. So we're, we'll start with this section, Ronnie, and then uh, we'll pry it off and then I'll kind of just work, work in sections. Does that sound yeah. good? We like to start on the side walls. So I'll get this wall done, that wall done, the back wall is going to be the last wall we do before we jump on the pan. Side of the wall. Oh, are you serious? Yeah, you're going too far in. Did it punch? No, it didn't, but I can hear it. Okay. Hey, also be careful you don't go through. Ronnie just gave me a heads up that I was punching all the way through the wall and hitting the drywall in the bedroom. <laughs> so, um, because, because you know, obviously there's studs in some places, but otherwise it's just hollow. And my my spade bit was going all the way through. So watch out for that. And what we did is we marked where the studs were. So we got the studs. Those are what you want to pry off of. So 
So I'm just going to take my bar against the stud and start prying. There you go. A little bit. You see how I just kind of wiggle it loose. So this is tile, float, and drywall, and I'm trying to take it all off down to the studs. Again, you may have Duroc or cement board and just tile, but same principle, you want to get behind the wall board to the stud so you can pry off of it. And see, that's loose. This one, Ronnie, do you think it's going to fall? It feels like it's going to fall. Should I just get out of the way? No. No? Lift it. Lift it? We'll let it go down, actually. And we'll go down all the way. All right, so yeah, so that's how it is. Just one one chunk. It it uh, came through. Screws are still attached. Piece came off pretty easily. If I was by myself, I probably would have just let it fall down onto the floor. Just well, I don't know. I mean, because it would have fell. It probably would have caught with the chicken wire. So that's going to try with this next one. I'm going to see if the chicken wire will catch it. But that's what you want. Um, you know, for most people, when they think they got to demo a shower, they'll chip all the tiles off first, then they'll bang up the mortar float, and they're trying to pull it off with the chicken wire and everything. Uh, but this way is a lot easier. Just, just wiggling it. I don't want to go too far. I just kind of want to break the whole thing loose. So there, now it's loose. So with this one, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna pull it down and see if it'll hang by the chicken wire that's here. See, yeah, the chicken wire allows it to kind of come down easily. my snips, get some of this lap out of here. There, now, now it just kind of fell down nice and gently. Again, we're coming out in big chunks instead of little tiny pieces. All right, here you go. All right. You got it? Yep. Yeah, it, it's pretty loose. And I got this uh, this nailer here for the shower door. I can pry off a little bit. But see, I'm just kind of giving it a little little break. Once it's a little bit loose, you can kind of wiggle. See, there's another big chunk. So I saved myself some time with the jackhammer without cutting another line. That guy just came right off. So that's the goal. If you want it to come off in big pieces, not little pieces, but not so big that it's unmanageable that you can't handle it yourself or you risk an injury. There you go. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. Okay, so got this wall pretty much done. I'll deal with this stuff later, but um, we'll go ahead and get this wall off and then we'll come back and I'll show you how we take this wall off. Here I wanted to show you, this is my goof up here that Ronnie caught me on. You can see here on the wall board, you know, it's banging through, banging through and hitting the wall board. And luckily, I didn't punch through. But, you know, um, if you haven't seen my videos before, I like to share it all, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Sometimes I get going and I'm, I'm worried about the camera and the film and there's things that I forget. But it's actually good because this is relatable to something with somebody without experience would do. 
So I try to keep this in all my videos, just so you know. All right, so now that we got these two walls off, I'm gonna start on the back wall. Uh, the first row here uh, is usually just kind of breaks up. So I'm gonna start by breaking up off, off of this row right up here. Then I'm gonna do a line here and here, and it should come off just like the other ones came off. Yeah, I was trying to do it without my respirator, but I started getting cement on my teeth. <laughs> That's probably not a good sign. Again, last thing you want this to do is fall on you. So, so you, you just got to be prepared. If it falls, you let it go and you just step out of the way. Don't try to grab anything with your hands because again, this stuff is like glass when it breaks. So yeah, it, the, the wire is supporting it here. And as you're cutting, this could break loose at any time too. So I'm trying to keep my, my distance here. See, I'm wearing some nice work boots and some heavy duty car hearts. That's part of uh, safety equipment in my mind. So I think I can get this off. So another big manageable piece. Come on. Come on out. Oh, we got the dog. Oh, hey, buddy. Come here. Oh. <laughs> so here's our friend. Here's our friend. Uh, been helping us out today. He's 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 been a little skittish with all the banging going on. But gosh, he's a sweetheart. Okay, buddy. Time to go. We got to get back to work. <laughs> All right, good What kind of broke, bro? Yeah, come on, dog. You got it? Yeah. You sure? You need to readjust it, I guess. Okay, I got it. Okay. Yeah, sometimes the big barb makes things a, a lot easier. We've got most of the walls off. We're gonna get into the pan here. And so maybe we'll take a little break. I gotta get some of this dust off of me here. Take the curb off. So it's always interesting to see what's under these pans, especially these traditional ones. Usually they're soaked with muck and water and all kinds of stuff. So uh, we'll take a break. We'll come back and get this pan out. All right, so we took a nice little, little lunch break and back. Uh, that's one thing when you're doing this demo work, it's hard work. Make sure you take breaks when you need them drink some water, eat a little bit of food, you come back rejuvenated, because when you're tired, that's when accidents happen. Don't want that to happen. Safety is a high priority here. So we got the walls off, cleaned up a little bit. I'm gonna start on the pan here. Similar, similar method to how we did the walls. I'm gonna just start using the demo hammer to break up chunks and get this mortar bed out. But we're gonna see 
uh, what's under this mortar bed here, see if, it, if it's been working correctly or if my assumption is correct that we're getting uh, water pulling up, usually due to insufficient weep holes in the bottom of the drain that water backs up and then wants to come up over the curb. So we'll check that out just to verify. chunk coming up but you can see here how how much water is still in these mud beds you need to brighten that up Kirk you can go ahead and but you see we have literally standing water in here even though there's a pre-slope you know that's that's all water that's just sitting in here yeah so we got standing water here so Go ahead back up, Kirk. So even though the pan, this in this instance, the hot mop hasn't failed, it's still waterproof. That water finds a way to escape out of the pan. So that's why I like using the newer sealed systems. Uh, almost every one of my videos has a sealed system where it doesn't have you know this thick layer of mortar to just hold water. The sealed system. Um, we would have the waterproofing right under the tile. It wouldn't be uh, underneath the mortar, so the mortar would stay dry. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of water in there. big chunks that we wanted. You got it? Yep. Now that we got the pan out, these last sections of wall should just come right out. Here's the uh, the hot mop. Uh, if you're not on the if you're not in California this would be a pan liner but it does the same thing. If you want to know what a hot mop is I'll put a link to a video in the description below. Show the whole process of what a hot mop is and how it's made. But it basically does what a pan liner does. Let's get uh, let's get the rest of this junk out of here and then we'll jump on the curves. I want to see if the weep holes are working at all on here. So if we can get just a little bottle of water or something and pour on the outside here and then see if the weep holes are working. Is this good water? You can drink it if you want some. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. I'm just pouring some water around the base here and we'll see if it ends up weeping into the drain. You should be able to see. I don't see it draining at all. It's just, it's just staying in a puddle out here. Yeah, so there's weep holes in here somewhere that are supposed to allow the water to get through. I get a lot of comments from you saying, well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. The old system works. The pan liner and mortar bed works. The two by four curb works. Well, unless you're tearing them out all the time, you don't really know. And if you do tear them out all the time, you've probably seen a lot of this going on. So just because it's old, and you've been taught that way doesn't mean that there's not a better way and i'm all about that that's why you see me uh, using new products the sealed system is the way to go 
Sealing the tile on the top, to me, is a better way of doing it. You're avoiding that mortar bed getting wet. Uh, you allevi alleviate the problem of the wicking up and over the curb and rotting things from the outside in. And as you can see, this water is still a puddle. We still have a puddle here. These weep holes are not working. So, so that's my pitch. You know, it's 2023. There's better ways of doing it than the old system. And leave your comments in the section below because I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that as well. So again, we'll be able to see more evidence of that on here. All this mortar is the dark gray color. It's all wet. You can see here, here's a piece of the lath. And the lath right here is uh, rusted. It's all rusted. So that's evidence of water getting in on the face of the curve and going down. Here's the curb. Now you can see our problem. We got wet wood. You can back out just a little bit, probably. Kerr. See, that's our problem. These two by fours are wet. You see all the water soaking into these two by fours. So, wood, especially dimensional lumber, two by fours, they soak up water and expand. So. I do not recommend two by fours to build your curb, especially on a slab foundation where there's no way for that subfloor to breathe at all. It's any moisture gets in there, it's soaked up into the two by fours. See how wet that is, Kirk? Completely soaked with water. The old way is not always better than the new way. I'm just gonna get under here and uh, pick this up. And oh yeah, we have moisture in the slope board here. We'll check that out in a minute. But yeah, I'm just gonna take my big jar. Get this, get the hot mop out. So it's all wet under here. It's, it's all wet under here. Again, this is all moisture that came from the outside of the shower and crept in. All this concrete is, is wet. As you can see, here's dry concrete. That's what it's supposed to look like. The light color, that's dry concrete, and I'm standing on wet concrete. So what it did is it, is it the water wicked over the curb and into the slope board that was the pre-slope for the hot mop. And that's why it's kind of in this, this pattern here. Yeah, all of this is wet. It's all wet and the slope board here is just turned into mush because it's all wet. So if this was a wood subfloor, you would have had a bunch of water damage in the substrate below. You know, now you're now you're talking uh, replacing probably three quarter inch plywood subfloor or OSB, whatever it is. Then the joist below could even be damaged. So luckily this was a slab foundation, and this moisture that went over the curb and then under the pan, you know, didn't damage anything below because it's concrete. You can't really hurt the concrete. But uh, if it was wood. If it, if it was wood, it would have, huh? <laughs> Everything is out. Uh, this took us, we probably started here about 10 o'clock. It's 1.30 now, we took lunch, so, um, you know, probably about three hours total it took us. Uh, but I had, I had some teamwork here, you notice I had Ronnie and Kirk working by my side, and. You know, that's one thing that makes the job go so much easier. So if you have somebody to help you, whether it's a, a partner, a husband, a wife, a friend, whoever, uh, you know, 
get, get some help. I mean, it makes it so much more enjoyable. I love getting out and working with the guys. Kirk, Kirk, how long have you been working with me? Nine years, Isaac. Nine years. So Kirk's been with me nine years. Ronnie's been with me eight. Uh, I love working with my crew. Now, could I do this by myself? Yeah, but you know, I've been doing this since 2001. So I'm, I've been in business for myself for 23 years, 22 years. One of the reasons I've been had so much longevity is because I've had good people around me. Not only does it help me with the wear and tear on my body, it just lifts my spirits up. I love being with the guys, love being with Kirk, getting out on the job sites and doing this. So if you find that you're you're lacking in that, if, if your job doesn't feel if it doesn't feel fulfilling, a lot of times it's because you're trying to do everything on your own. We need people around us. Well, I shouldn't say we need people around us. It's so much better with people around us that can share in the job with you. We can talk about it. Went out and had lunch and just talked stories. I talked about my fishing trip this weekend. and uh, It just makes makes life and work so much better. So if you need to find somebody to partner up with, if, if, you're, if you're doing this as a profession, uh, there's a lot of you out there working by yourself, I, I plead with you, find somebody to, to help you do this. You'll enjoy it so much more. You'll be happier, you'll treat your family better, you'll, you'll treat your clients better, you'll just be in a better mood all, all in all. So uh, I'll show you how I put this thing back together. I feel that you know the sealed systems are better, the newer technology is better. So make sure that you're subscribed to my channel so you can see these videos as I put this back together. But I'll leave you with that. Uh, find somebody to help you with your work, it'll be so much better. I'm so glad you're here with me too, watching these videos. Wouldn't be what it is without you guys, so I love you. I love being your tile coach. We'll see you on the next video.